Hey, what's going on everybody? Dr. Sis here. So today I have a really important public health briefing and some really good news for all of us, unless I guess if we're selling a COVID vaccine. But anyhow, if you've been following me, you will know that I've been talking about vitamin D right from the get-go. And right? right at the beginning, I was like, man, I would love to see the numbers showing the outcomes of people with high vitamin D, like sufficient vitamin D levels versus those who are low in vitamin D. Well, we're starting to see those numbers. And in Spain, they actually did a randomized controlled trial, the gold standard of research to test vitamin D on people with COVID pneumonia. So in this study, they had 76 patients with COVID pneumonia. Of the 76, they gave 26 of those people a placebo. Of those 26 people, 13 ended up in the ICU and two people died. 50 people that gave vitamin D. Of those 50 people, only one person ended up in the ICU and nobody died. Dude, that's a huge difference. That's awesome, right? And in this group, there was more people over 60 and more people on immune suppressing drugs because they had organ transplants in the past. This is great news, man. Great news. Now you may be saying, well, it's only one study and it's not very many people. You're right, but the outcomes are phenomenal. And we have other studies out there that aren't as good as a randomized controlled trial. They're observational studies, but I'm gonna go over a couple just because it, it's very, very important. So in the Philippines, they looked at 212 people that had COVID. And they looked back at their medical records and checked the last time they had vitamin D, their vitamin D checked and what their levels were, all right? So they put them in people that were sufficient in vitamin D, people that were low, and people that were very low. So for the people that were sufficient in vitamin D, only 3.6% of them ended up severe or in critical condition. Now, if they were low in vitamin D, that jumped from 3.6 to 29% and 26%. That's a huge difference, huge difference. And if you're very low, 40% and 33%. Again, another big jump. Another study, same type of study out of Indonesia. 780 people with COVID. So the people that were sufficient in vitamin D, 4% of them died. For the people that were lower, very low, 88 to 99% of them passed away. Again, a huge difference, huge. Right now, the reason I brought up vitamin D months ago is because there's so much evidence in support of vitamin D and how your immune system works. Right, so this is the time of the year where normally you hear tons of advertising about your flu shot is your best defense against the flu. That's not true. If you really look into it, vitamin D outperforms the flu shot. Vitamin D is essential for a high function immune system. And if you look more into it, it just so much of it makes sense. So if you look like one of the risk factors uh, from having severe complications from COVID is being a minority, having darker skin, being obese, or being older, right? So here's the thing. Let's say you have darker skin. Let's say someone with dark skin and someone with fair skin goes out in the sun for the same 30 minutes. The person with darker skin is gonna produce less vitamin D than the person with fair skin. Lower vitamin D levels, lower immunity, more severe complications when you get sick. People are obese. You have fat in between your skin and your body, right? So your the sun hits your skin. The skin tries to produce vitamin D, but you don't get the same amount of absorption as if a, a thinner person. So your vitamin D levels are lower, right? Older people, we know as our as we age, we don't produce vitamin D as well. Plus, we I mean, just to be honest, older people aren't outside in the sun as much as they should be. So their vitamin D levels are lower. Like so much of it makes sense to just the importance of vitamin D, right? And so one thing I would do, and I think would be really important, is instead of testing for cases all the time, to actually set up vitamin D testing sites. So you can go in and get tested for COVID too, but also get your vitamin D checks. Like, oh my gosh, you're really low in vitamin D. You really should be taking vitamin D supplements to bring your body to sufficient to protect you against COVID, the flu, rhinovirus, other viruses out there. Now, I'm not saying, that taking vitamin D is gonna prevent you from catching it. But what it can do is boost your immune system, strengthen your immune system, so when you do get it, instead of having severe complications, your body's stronger and you're one of those people that they call an asymptomatic carrier, which really just means a healthy person. All right, so what do I recommend? It's not what I recommend, what do the experts recommend and what do I follow personally, because I really think it's important to practice what you preach, is I take 35 IUs of vitamin D3, very important that's number three, per pound of body weight every single day. Which means if you're 100 pounds, you should take about 3,500 IUs per day. 
I'm 200 pounds, so I take about 7,000 IUs per day. Now, I know the recommended daily allowance is lower, but those, the, the, the RDA recommendations are bad for a couple of really important reasons. One, the RDA recommendations are based on the amount you need to prevent like getting osteomalacia or rickets. I don't want to take enough vitamin D just so I don't have osteomalacia. I want optimal. So these recommendations are based on being an optimal healthy person. Another thing that doesn't make sense is the RDA, they don't factor in body size. Like, does it make any sense for a 220 pound muscular man to take as much vitamin D as a 120 pound fit woman? Well, of course not. So that's why we do it based on body size. And this is why, I, one thing that doesn't make any sense to me is let's say you go to the hospital and you're low in vitamin D and they give you a 50,000 IU shot of vitamin D2, the synthetic version, once per week. Like, how does that make any sense at all? Now, ideally, we're outside in the sun on a regular basis getting vitamin D produced every single day. Wouldn't it make more sense to take the naturally occurring form of vitamin D every single day on a consistent basis? Well, yes. Things to look for when you get your vitamin D. Make sure your vitamin D is in a healthy fat. Vitamin D, make sure D3 is in a healthy fat. It's a fat-soluble vitamin, and the fat helps you absorb it better. There's no point in taking anything if it just passes through your body. And you gotta make sure it's a healthy fat. Too often, I see vitamin D in like canola oil or corn oil or safflower oil. It's like, why would you pay for a supplement that has oils that's bad for you? Make sure it's in a good oil. So exactly which vitamin D do I take? Um, this is mine. So it's kind of funny. Sometimes people are like, oh, you're just, you're just saying this because you wanna sell your stuff. It's actually the other way around. The reason vitamin D is one of the very few supplements I sell is because there's so damn much evidence showing how good it is for us. And there's so much evidence showing how so many people are deficient in it, right? I mean, if it was all about selling money, I would sell protein shakes and pre-workout drinks, which is what everyone wants anyhow. I didn't do any of that stuff. I just, just a handful of things that have, overwhelming evidence to show it's really good for you. All right, so mine is 5,000 IUs of vitamin D in flaxseed and olive oil. And here's what's really important about supplements, you guys, is it, the, the industry's not regulated at all, at all. So, I mean, literally, what is on the label doesn't have to be what's inside the bottle, and those people, you don't even get in trouble, right? That's why I do it myself, start to finish. So I have the company make it, then I have it third-party tested, so I know what's on the label is actually in the bottle. And I know it works is because I'll have people get tested, give them my vitamin D, they get tested again, and their levels are three, four times higher, which is what you want. So this is mine for adults. And this is the liquid version from a colleague of mine that I trust 100% for kids. So what's really nice is you use a dropper so you can really control the dosage, right? So, so like this morning, that's exactly what I did. I took, shook it up, put three drops on my son's tongue and like one, one and a half, two little drops on my daughter's tongue. Very, very simple. I'm gonna take, so for me, I'm about 200 pounds, so there's about 5,000 I use each. I take one one day, then two, one, then two, one, then two, so it averages 7,500-ish. Uh, I use the vitamin D every single day. Now in the summertime, I didn't take it at all because I'm outside all the time, and often I don't have my shirt on, I'm getting plenty of sun and, and whatever, but now, starting now, it's, it's just way different, so I don't miss my vitamin D, and I recommend you take it too. So if you wanna check out mine, very, very, that's, click, I'll put the link up above, click on it, you can check it out. If you want to go online and look at something, just make sure it's D3, and make sure it's in a healthy oil. Another thing too, you'll hear sometimes like, oh, you need vitamin K. If you eat even remotely close to the way I teach, you're getting plenty of vitamin K. Um, I see no reason to supplement anything that you can't get adequate amounts of from diet. Most things you can get adequate amounts of from a decent diet, it's just vitamin D, it comes from the sun. I mean, that's our, our main source, that's why it's so damn important. And based on these numbers, man, I, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't spend literally like five cents per day to give your body something that can help your immune system this much.